Hello everybody and welcome, this is Gabby Sparts. We're going to be drafting some Shadows over Innistrad today. And we've already opened our pack, so let's take a look at what we've got here. Corrupted Graphstone, not really a rare that we're interested in taking. Lightning Axe is very strong. Um, we're likely to draft something like um, Red Black Vampires if we do something like this. Anything that we can discard to Lightning Axe and get some value off of it would be pretty good. Uh, some other cards that are strong in this pack. Well, Darren Duelist, Tooth Collector, Tenacity. Uh, Tenacity is pretty strong. It's not something that I'd be happy first picking. Tooth Collector, ex excellent, but I'm happy taking the Lightning Axe here, so let's go ahead and take that. Let's see, Eerie Interlude, another rare that we're not very interested in taking. Ravenous Bloodseeker is a strong discard outlet. It's free, and... Uh, if we've already picked first picked Lightning Axe and we pick up this nice vampire, this could be a way for us to get started into a black-red um, vampire madness sort of thing. There's a Twins of Morris State here. We wouldn't second pick this, but um, maybe we can get it on the wheel. That would be pretty good for us. So we're going to take this Ravenous Bloodseeker. Stencia Masquerade uh, is an interesting card here. Some other interesting cards, Hellpack Resurgence and Moonlight Hunt, it looks like. Uh, no one has really moved into the werewolf archetype yet. They might have taken the wolves and we're getting these payoff cards right here, but I am happy taking Sentia Masquerade. I think this is one of those cards where when you're ahead, this card's unbeatable, and when you're behind, obviously this card doesn't do anything, but it's strong enough that I'm okay taking it here, and it's something that we can discard to either of these cards. Make these a little bit bigger for you. It's foil too. All right. Harvest Hand is okay. Not really what we want in this kind of deck. Haunted Cloak, I'm not really super interested in taking. We're not seeing a lot of black cards, which is somewhat unfortunate. There's a grotesque mutation here, but it's not really what we want. Nibbles of Dusk is fine. We could take Apothecary Geist and end up in some white, red, sort of aggressive deck. Obviously, Stensia Masquerade is not very good in that kind of deck. Neither is really Ravenous Bloodseeker. We probably hedge here and take the Geist and see where that takes us. Mm, Rise from the Tides is interesting, but not really what this deck is trying to do. At least not yet. Ghoul Seed is interesting too. What's a good discard outlet? This could be pretty good if we do end up drafting some madness sort of deck. There's Throttle in this pack. I really don't think Throttle is very good in this format. I think I feel pretty good about taking this Ghoul Seed here. So... Amber Eye Wolf is not great, and I don't feel very good about picking it here, neither is Pyrehound. We took take the Vessel of Ephemera. There's really no black coming our way. I guess we can take the Amber Eye Wolf here and stay a little open, since we don't really know if we're going to be white or black yet. Slash, this deck is not very focused quite just yet, so... Looks like somebody else might be picking up our vampires. Convicted Killer, Key, Rush of Adrenaline, and Jace's Scrutiny. Okay, black is not coming our way. I think here we can just settle for a Convicted Killer. It's not great, but it's pretty much the best we can take in that pack. Spectral Shepherd, not quite as good if we're not drafting blue. Firebug or Hound of the Firebugs is really, really underwhelming. We can take Falconrath Gorger here. Gives all of our other vampires. Um, it will give all of our vampires madness too. So if we ever pair that up with like Ghoul Steed, for example, uh, we might be able to discard some of our vampires and play them with madness. So. It doesn't seem like we're going to get there in the Madness deck. This just looks like a more aggressive red deck with potentially white or black cards. Mm. 
Looks like the pack is stuck or something. Let's see if there's anyone in the draft that we know. <laughs> what a great name, Harrison the Shark. <laughs> nah, I don't know anybody in our draft. Well, Darren Duelist came back. And that's really, really, really interesting because my assumption was that there's somebody somewhere on this table that's picking up all the vampires that we wanted to get into when we picked up things like Stancia Masquerade and started out with Ravenous Bloodseeker and whatnot. But if this is still here and it made it all the way around. It's possible that there were just no good vampires for people to take. So I think we're going to take the speculative well, Darren Duelist. We could take a Gastaf Arsonist, which is really unexciting and not not great of a card, but you know, he does what you need him to do. <laughs> we could take Uncaged Fury, though I do think this is better in like a Werewolf's kind of deck. And there's also Twins of Mara Sage, which wield. And the fact that Twins is in this pack also tells me once again that I think maybe there were just not that many vampires in this draft. So let's take the Twins and we can probably move this Apothecary guys to the side now. Make it a little bit bigger. Here we can take Merciless Resolve. Uh, we'll take Haunted Cloak for the sideboard, though we're probably not going to play it. We can take Dual Shot, this is a good sideboard card. Murderer's Axe and an Island. Alright, so this is coming together better than it seemed. On our first pack, it really seemed like somebody was pushing us out of red black vampires, but these two wheeling are a pretty good sign for us. Let's see, is there anything else we would take out for now? We probably don't want to play Convicted Killer or the Amber White Wolf if we can help it. All of these other cards are pretty good. Our Sorcerer's always fine. I've drafted red black zombies quite a little bit in this format. I like it a lot. I think it's a really good archetype. There's like almost two different versions of this of this deck. Let's look at this pack first though. Angel of Deliverance, not our colors, not even that impressive of a rare, not really. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. A cursed witch is very strong. It's kind of not on theme, <laughs> but it is just a very strong card. It attacks for a lot, it makes it so that your opponent wants to kill it, and even when they kill it, you still continue to drain. So I guess our choice here is between a Cursed Witch and Insolent Neonate. Neonate being an awesome discard uh, outlet. It's free. It's, you can draw a free card if you actually discarded something to it. Um, so it's very strong, especially in this kind of deck. I do think that the Witch is good enough that we just want to take the Witch, and maybe we can hope to wheel... Ooh, this is fun. Maybe we can hope to wield a Neonate. So, Call of the Bloodline is awesome in this archetype. Call of the Bloodline is just generally a s s very, very, very strong card. And if maybe we can get something like the Sanisterium Skeleton, aka Skelly, on the way back, then we can always discard to this. We're basically drawing a card every time we do it, because we'll get a Vampire, and then we can buy back the Sanitarium Skeleton. So I would like to get this guy. Potentially we can also w wheel this Twins of Mora state. That would be nice for us. So... Let's take Call of the Bloodline here. Um, this pack is a little less exciting than our previous pack. I don't like this card, Dissension in the Ranks. I think a lot needs to go right for you to actually benefit. Like, yes, in the best case scenario, I think that card works out great. I think in other scenarios, the card is just horrendous and <laughs> you don't want to... Yeah, I don't... Let's not take that card. <laughs> so our other options are Uncaged Fury or Grotesque Mutation. I like Grotesque Mutation. I think I like it a little bit better than Uncaged Fury in this deck. I do think this is better in the Werewolves deck. Um, I think gaining... I think this will help us win some fights, especially with Stuntia Masquerade. Some of our creatures are already going to have first strike. And getting plus three plus one and gaining life will help us win a race, so we'll take Grotesque Mutation here. Um, Foul Orchard, not really a land that we're looking for. There's a lot of green cards, it looks like. So 
Someone is getting a good green deck somewhere out there. Moreland Drifters, not our colors, but it's a good card. I like that guy. And then there's a Twins of Mora Estate. Maybe we'll just take the Twins here. It's another card that we can hopefully cheat out relatively quickly with Call the Bloodline. Um, Lightning Axe. You know, we could on turn four Lightning Axe and play Twins of Mora Estate. That would work out very nicely for us. So let's take that. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, it's, it's very clear that it, there's almost like two different types of vampire decks. The ones that go a little lower to the ground and... Huh, interesting. Okay. A second copy of Stencia Masquerade, which doesn't stack well, considering that we have our first Stencia Masquerade. It doesn't seem like what I want. I don't like Reduced to Ashes, but it might be the best card for us. There's also a Village Messenger here that turns into a 2-2 with Menace. I, I do like that our deck is pretty aggressive, though the Werewolf doesn't really fit very well into the whole Vampires theme too seamlessly. I do think this is a pretty mediocre removal spell, though. We would never consider taking Rotten Hard Ghoul. I think I'll take Reduce to Ashes here. Although our deck is pretty aggressive. Maybe we do just take the Village Messenger here. Hopefully we can do hopefully we can find some sinister concoctions and do better than Reduce to Ashes. I really I'm not a fan of that card and I also don't think it's good in this deck, so we'll see if what we can do in terms of removal. Anyway, so the Vampire's deck, you'll either have a version that tends to go a lot lower and like lower in curve and plays Voldaire and Duelist to kind of finish out the game and then there's a definitely a more controlling version of it. I guess it's the version that includes Call the Bloodline but you can be pretty aggressive. Call the Bloodline is really good in either version of the deck I think. There's a Vampire Noble here. Uh, it's you know very very vanilla Vampire. It's a 3-2 with no abilities but in our deck it's pretty good so we'll take it. Let's see, another Umber Eye Wolf, True Faith Sensor. Though we're never gonna get the bonus because our creatures are not humans. Um, we don't really like anything in this pack. Huh. I guess we will take a second Umber Eye Wolf, though we're not planning on playing it. Let's see, what do we take out now? Ooh, 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 there's a lot of goodies for us here. All right, so there's four cards that we could possibly consider. Malevolent Whisperer, Olivia's Bloodsworn, Blood Mad Vampire, and Vampire Noble. Vampire Noble's not really in contention because it's definitely the worst card of all those three. Malevolent Whispers is fine, but these two are excellent. Olivia's Bloodsworn is a very, very, very good vampire in this archetype. Gives our other vampires haste. It itself can be a 2-1. That's just a 2-1 for 1. That's pretty strong. Blood Mad Vampire is also pretty good. I just think Olivia's Bloodsworn will be better in our deck. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. Insulin Neonate is a really nice pickup for us here. Insulin Neonate would be a little better with uh, the previous vampire that we ended up not taking. But... We still have a lot of vampires that we can madness out, and we even have the Falconrath Gorger, so let's take the Neonate here. A third Twins of Moor Estate. I don't think we'll play the third one. We might. We'll see. We'll take it, though. We might not need the Ghoul State once we have the third Twins of Moor Estate. I have been impressed with this card. This card's pretty good. Dissension, then Narangs for Uncaged Fury. Now we'll take the Fury. Start moving stuff that we don't want. I'm not sure that we want um, Merciless Resolve. We definitely don't want Convicted Killer. Let's get him out of here. We'll take a Structural Distortion. Uh, I think we'd rather not play Village Messenger. We can help it. Let's take a Rotten Hard Ghoul. Sure, we'll take the Chasm. And Swamp. Alright. Stack these up a little bit better. Okie dokie. Pack three, let's see what we get. Ooh, there are things that are good for us here. 
Uh, Geese's Bidding is a card that I like very much. I think it's very good. It's good if we can discard it as well. Though I do see a Mad Prophet here. And with triple Twins of Moor Estate, with Stencia, Masquerade, and man, we haven't picked up any like. Murderous Compulsion would be amazing in this deck. Oh, the skeleton didn't wheel. I just realized that. We really want to pick up a skeleton if we can. I think here I'll just take Mad Prophet because I think it's excellent in our deck. There is something to note here. There is a dead weight here. I do think that this is an excellent removal spell, but I think that Mad Prophet is going to be so good in our deck that we should take it. Hmm. So, we'll Darren Duelist and the next pick isn't even close. I don't like Vessel of Malignity, I especially don't like it very much in this deck. Obsessive Skinner is awesome, but obviously not our colors. We don't want to play Convicted Killer. I don't like Explosive Apparatus, and we would never play Hunt of the Farbog, so let's take Voldaren Duelist. Oh, okay, there's things for us here. There's a Breakneck Rider, which is really good, but much better in the Werewolves deck, though Getting our creatures plus one plus so and trample when we already have called the bloodline is pretty good. We have a Morkred Necropod, which is an excellent card. And I think maybe this is the pick. Though the one thing that makes me a little reticent to take this card is that there is a skeleton in this pack, and we really want a skeleton for this deck. But just in terms of raw power and toughness, this guy is awesome. And we'll have a lot of things to sacrifice to it too. I think this is a really close pick. We are at 20 cards. Mm. This is really tough. This is a very close pick. Hmm. I think we're going to take the Necropod and hopefully we get to see another Skeleton. We will definitely not see another Necropod through the draft, so... Oh, very nice. We were looking for something like this. A Murderous Compulsion here is a great card for us to discard to the other things that we have. And something else that we might consider here is Stromkirk Mentor, but we already have a lot of 4 drops and they're all pretty good. Mad Prophet, Voldaren Duelist, and Cursed Witch. So let's take Compulsion here. Ooh! Wow, this pack is so good for us! Okay, so there's Incorrigible Youth, Indulgent Aristocrat, and Fiery Temper. I think Aristocrat is so good in this deck. It is really, really good in this deck, but my one concern with our deck right now is that we don't have a lot of removal. We have a Lightning Axe and that's it. We have, I guess, two Voldaire and Duelists, which temporarily make it so that we don't have a, they don't have a blocker, and then we have a Compulsion, which will kill an attacking creature. So, oh, but Indulgent Aristocrat is such a combo with Call the Bloodline, too. You just keep sacking one creature, and then all your other creatures are like 1-1 one, one lifelinkers that keep getting bigger. I think we should take Fiery Temper because I think the removal is good enough and maybe we can pray that that guy comes back to us so it's very unlikely that that will happen. Uh, nothing here for us. We'll just take this Hellpack Wolf and take it to the sideboard. Mm, nothing here for us either. We're not really hurting for playables at this point. We have a pretty good deck. We can take the Forgotten Creation and take it to the sideboard as well. Ooh, ooh, there's a lot of stuff for us here. So we have Dance with Devils, which is a good card, but I like it better in the Werewolves deck where you just pass a turn and then you still have an instant, you get to flip your wolves and then you get to, um, you get to flip your wolves and then you still get to cast, like, use all your mana for the turn. Inner Struggle is a great removal spell and I like it a lot, but I think maybe we just want the third Voldaren Duelist. Voldaren Duelist is very good in this deck, although... We wanted more 2-drops, I think, if we wanted another Voldaren Duelist, so maybe I'll just take the Inner Struggle here. Reduce to Ashes, Inspiring Captain and Alms of the Vein. None of these are cards I'm really excited about. I'll take the Reduce to Ashes and put it in the sideboard, though. We are not gonna play it. No way, Jose. Let's see, we're at 24. What do we cut? Uh, I don't like the grotesque mutation very much. Maybe we cut that. Wait, 
we have a number of wolf. Maybe we cut that. <laughs> Let's see. Resolve. Yeah, we wish we would have picked up more, ch like more cheap creatures. I guess we'll take a vessel of malignity, but put it in our sideboard. Hey, the Breknik Rider came back. We will actually play this guy. Get in there. Any chance that the Aristocrat comes back? I believe it's in this pack. That would make me so happy if he came back. He did not come back. <laughs> uh, we'll take the Ember Eye Wolf. Ah, the Skin Invasion's fine for us. We will play that card. Oh man, we didn't get the Skeleton, so we ended up with a Morkard Necropod and no Skeleton. Mm. I think in hindsight, maybe we should have taken that skeleton. Maybe that was a mistake. So let's see our vampire count because there's a chance we don't want to play Stuntia Masquerade. We have. This is not going to be. Well, I guess Stuntia Masquerade still gives our creatures first strike, which is pretty good. I don't think we want Uncaged Fury. We have the Twins, Morkard, a Cursed Witch, Mad Prophet, Inner Struggle, Voldaren Duelist, Voldaren Duelist, Fiery Temper, Breakneck Rider, Neckbreaker, Stuntia Masquerade, Vampire Noble, Merciless Resolve. Maybe this is not a very good Merciless Resolve deck. I like the Bloodseeker. I don't mind playing the Wolf. I don't like this Wolf very much, but we have so many effects like Voldaire and Duelist and, and things like that that I don't mind getting on the board a little early because we're a pretty aggressive deck at that. Falconrath, Corger, Insulin Neonate, Lightning Axe, and Skin. Yeah, so this looks good to me. Let's see if there's anything we might want to bring from the board. We have a bunch of Ember Wolves, a Magmatic Chasm, Grotesque Mutation, and Vessel of Malignity. Not really going to play those. Not really interested in Hellpack Wolf, not really. This is too expensive. Not super interested in these either. This seems good to me. Let's add some lands. What does it suggest? 10 and 7. We do have double red and breakneck rider and fiery temper. Though we do plan on discarding fiery temper. I think I'd rather go 9 and 8 here. Because we do have a lot of 2 drops that we want to hit. And that is 40 cards. And this deck looks good to me. Here is a full thing if you guys want to see. It seems fine. I think uh, I think this would have been better if maybe we picked up the skeleton instead of the more card necropod. Though I do like this card. It's a little less synergistic in our deck, and having a skeleton to discard to call the bloodline would have been excellent. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, we will be back with round one here from Daily MTG.